Hello, Internet Pipe Community. Ethan, Parsimonious Piper. And again today, I am with Otter Piper. And we are covering letter six in C.S. Lewis screw tape letters today. Uh, if you will, Otter Piper, take it away. My dear Wormwood, I am delighted to hear that your patience, age, and profession make it possible, but by no means certain, that he will be called up for military service. We want him to be in the maximum uncertainty so that his mind will be filled with contradictory pictures of the future, every one of which arouses hope or fear. There is nothing like suspense and anxiety for barricading a human's mind against the enemy. He wants men to be concerned with what they do. Our business is to keep them thinking about what will happen to them. Your patient will, of course, have picked up the notion that he must submit with patience to the enemy's will. What the enemy means by this is primarily that he should accept with patience the tribulation which has actually been dealt out to him, the present anxiety and suspense. It is about this that he is to say, thy will be done. And for the daily task of bearing this, that the daily bread will be provided. It is your business to see that the patient never thinks of the present fear as his appointed cross, but only of the things he is afraid of. Let him regard them as his crosses. Let him forget that since they are incompatible, they cannot all happen to, to him. And let him try to practice fortitude and patience to them all in advance. For real resignation at the same time moment to a dozen different and hypothetical fates is almost impossible. And the enemy does not greatly assist those who are trying to attain it. Resignation to present and actual suffering, even where that suffering consists of fear, is far easier and is usually helped by this direct action. An important spiritual law is here involved. I have explained that you can weaken his prayers by diverting his attention from the enemy himself to his own states of mind about the enemy. On the other hand, Fear becomes easier to master when the patient's mind is diverted from the thing feared to the fear itself. Considered as a present and undesirable state of his own mind, and when he regards the fear as his appointed cross, he will inevitably think of it as a state of mind. One can therefore formulate the general rule. In all activities of mind which favor our cause, Encourage the patient to be unself-conscious and to concentrate on the object. But in all activities favorable to the enemy, bend his mind back on itself. Let an insult or a woman's body so fix his attention outward that he does not reflect. I am now entering into the state called anger or the state called lust. Contrawise, let the reflection, my feelings are now growing more devout, or more charitable, so fix his attention inward that he no longer looks beyond himself to see our enemy or his own neighbors. As regards his more general attitude to the war, you must not rely too much on those feelings of hatred, which the humans are so fond of discussing in Christian or anti-Christian periodicals. In his anguish, the patient can, of course, be encouraged to revenge himself by some vindictive feelings directed towards the German leaders. And that is good so far as it goes, but it is usually a sort of melodramatic or mythical hatred directed against imaginary scapegoats. He has never met these people in real life. They are lay figures modeled on what he gets from newspapers. The results of such fanciful hatred are often most disappointing and of all humans, the English are in this respect the most deplorable milksops. They are creatures of that miserable sort who loudly proclaim that torture is too good for their enemies and then give tea and cigarettes to the first wounded German pilot who turns up at the back door. Do what you will, there is going to be some benevolence as well as some malice in your patient's soul. The great thing is to direct the malice to his immediate neighbors whom he meets every day and to thrust his benevolence out to the remote cir 
circumference to people he does not know. The malice thus becomes wholly real and the benevolence largely imaginary. There is no good at all in inflaming his hatred of Germans if, at the same time, a pernicious habit of charity is growing up between him and his mother, his employer, and the man he meets in the train. Think of your man as a series of concentric circles, his will being the innermost, his intellect coming next, and finally his fantasy. You can hardly hope at once to exclude from all the circles everything that smells of the enemy, but you must keep on shoving all the virtues outward till they are finally located in the circle of fantasy and all the desirable qualities inward into the will. It is only in so far as they reach the will and are there embodied in habits that the virtues are really fatal to us. I don't, of course, mean what the patient mistakes for his will, the conscious fume and fret of resolutions and clenched teeth, but the real center, what the enemy calls the heart. All sorts of virtues painted in the fantasy or approved by the intellect, or even in some measure loved and admired, will not keep a man from our father's house. Indeed, they may make him more amusing when he gets there. Your affectionate uncle, Screwtape. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab onto the first couple of things that uh, that Lewis talks about here, and the the first then being this notion, and, and he carries over from the last letter the the concept of suffering into this concept of fear and the, uh, a burden that uh, believers uh, carry, and to get the human focused not on the actual burden, but on the fears surrounding it. Uh, and he uses the war as an example of this, uh, to keep the believer, especially this new patient, from focusing on the war itself, which is a real pain and suffering, but instead to distract him with all of these fears of what might happen, many or most of which are incompatible with each other, so they can't possibly all happen, and yet his mind uh, should be directed to focus on those instead of dealing with the, the real fear, which is something that God can help him with because it's real. And this, again, another technique of distraction, of distracting the human away from, from what's real and what's important uh, to something that makes him spiritually ineffective. Then he moves right on from that into this, uh, this idea of let's also, let's keep the human focused on the things that benefit us the most. So if, if there is something that is going on in the human's life that uh, is where his focus is in a direction that benefits us, the demons, then Let's keep him focused on that thing and not on, on what may be truly happening underneath. And his example there being uh, if you are insulted and you, you become angry, keep him focused on the insult, not on the fact that he is becoming angry and this anger is a state that, that maybe he shouldn't be in. But keep him focused on the thing so that the anger builds and grows. And that uh, that is to uh, to uh, screw tape and wormwood's advantage uh, in that sense because it keeps him in an unhealthy spiritual state. Uh, his other example being uh, the the example of lusting after a woman. Well, the same thing is true. If you can keep the man focused on the object instead of what's happening inside him, then he he doesn't get into an area where the real spiritual battle is occurring. And, and he loses it because he's not fighting it. The flip side of that is in areas that, uh, that are an advantage to the enemy, i.e. God, Screwtape and Wormwood uh, wants to keep our focus on the, the thing itself, again, but not on what its consequences are. And the example he, he uses is a good one. It's this idea of I'm becoming more charitable. Well, let's let's keep him focused on this 
this growing charity within himself and how good this is and, and what a good person this makes him. And that keeps him from being able to turn his attention then back toward the enemy, God, or his neighbors uh, outside of himself, where he might actually apply that growing charity in a useful sense. Don't let him do that. Let him navel gaze so that he he remains, again, spiritually ineffective and ineffective in the real world around. Uh, it brought to mind uh, for me this phrase that I used to hear uh, more when I was younger, that you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. And mm -hmm. some people by that used to mean that that all you ever thought about was heaven, but this it could apply here too, that you may be focused on something that has some intrinsic good value, but you're so focused on it that you're not applying it in your life to the people and the circumstances around you. Definitely. Constant distraction. Be distracted with the good that you should do, want to do, that God wants you to do in the present moment with the present cross that you might have been given. Keep in that fantasy, that fantasy world, and think that that's what is that what is, that's what is real. I wrote in my notes here that you know, virtue is acquired, formed, built. Whether it builds the right best word, but acquired and formed within the moments of our life, within our daily life, with the people that we meet every day. Uh, the people in our own home that we might just meet once, as he says, you know, on the train, don't see that as where you're going to form uh, virtue, but in the great things that you that you might do or might be a part of. And he uses the war. And, you know, most of them aren't going to be a part of so many of so much that's going on, even though it's a real thing. But don't build the virtue in what's happening in your daily life. Keep distracted in what could happen, what might happen, the fear that could happen instead of how do I deal with the present, uh, the present moment and the, and the present fear. And uh, an example that came to mind of the object and uh, the fear or the fear, the object of the fear or the fear itself, keep in the fantasy of what could be happening with someone else or out there. And I was thinking of sometimes being, uh, you know, when I'm in the church or as a pastor. And I remember one specific time I was working with a group of men. Um, and this was some years ago, so it's nothing, uh, nothing present. And, you know, they wanted to grow deeper in their spiritual life. And uh, I was trying to help them with that. And I remember specifically one time they thought, I knew when they said this, and it, what brought it to mind was uh, Lewis's comment, uh, or Screwtape's uh, comment about lusting after uh, a woman. And he mentions here, don't have them look at, I'm now entering into this, but concentrate on the object itself and i remember one time that they asked me and i i could tell that they were thinking that they were being so good and virtuous to ask me from the pulpit to kind of you know tell women to be more modest because you know it challenges their chastity or or, or whatever and i remember challenging them to say okay that's one thing but let's look at the heart that is not being chased let's look at your own heart and you could see that caused a little uncomfortableness. They didn't want to go to that part of the will or the, or the center, as, uh, as Lewis says, but let's keep out there. Let's, let's look at the others. Let's look at those uh, women and so forth. And uh, so it brought to mind and challenges myself to look at my own motives and, uh, and what's happening right now. Yes, and part of of the thing that jumped out at me there, and you know, you're talking about the responsibility of of dealing with my own heart. 
and Screwtape wants uh, Wormwood not to allow that to happen. And part of his his example, uh, you know, one that jumped out at me again, and here we're talking about this, uh, being so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good, was this, uh, you know, having uh, a hatred for the Germans. Um, well, all, that's all and good, but you're allowing him locally in his daily life to develop a, a greater love and charity in relationships with people like his mother. And that's a bad thing. So, you know, don't, don't throw a victory party over getting him to hate the Germans. Uh, e even though that may be a good thing, it's abstract. That's out in that outer ring, the fantasy land. It's not in the will and the heart where his, uh, the rubber meets the road in daily life. Uh, yes, it, it just made me think about how I can e so easily go through my daily life, whether I'm meeting a couple people here at church, or it might be one of a brother priest I meet, and to try to get through the moment, and I'll get, get to my prayer, and that's where I want to be holy. That's where I'm like, you know, God, help me to... Uh, to be more virtuous and to be holy or whatever words I might use. And it's almost like now this is reminding me, Lewis is like saying, you just missed those opportunities. The person you just met that maybe bugged you or the brother priest that you might think, you know, uh, could have done this better or that or didn't treat you right. It's like you just missed the opportunity of that particular cross or opportunity to grow in, in virtue. And uh, it real, I would. <laughs> Lewis really brings it to the heart. Yes, he does. Uh, the... Yeah, and and Screw Tape wants to avoid that. Um, you know, it, to to avoid really dealing with, uh, like like you said, I think that's a that is a great example of of what uh, Screw Tape is talking about here. Is yeah, when when we we leave an encounter with another person and uh, you know we may uh, we may send up a prayer for that person's circumstance maybe we were talking about a hardship they're going through uh, and yet we just spent 15 20 minutes with that person and neglected the opportunity that we had to apply that outer ring idea into our daily lives and screw tape does a good job uh, and i can say that personally and i'm sure lewis comes from that personally he he does a good job and i think a part of the beauty of what we're doing here and what a lot of the viewers and commenters are even sharing in the uh, in the videos is they're talking about this more they're you know, they're looking at you know how does this uh, how does this uh, affect within their own lives and and that's that is exactly what screw tape doesn't want uh, he doesn't want us to come to the heart of the matter to think about you know uh, how how does maybe the i guess the enemy this this time being uh, our enemy the evil one screw tape you know, how is he trying to deceive him? How does God want to be in the reality of our daily moments with the people we're with uh, right now? So uh, I, re I really, uh, I love to hear that. And I really love the, what we're doing, what the, in the many of the viewers and commenters will share about how this is uh, working within their life. Uh, personally, I just, I love that. Yeah. To get you thinking and even more than that, to get you doing. So that, uh, so that as you go through this next week, you don't get stuck in what screw tape would like you to get stuck in, and that is not letting your uh, your own growth and the ideas that you are you are coming to grips with and growing in. He doesn't want you to let those impact your daily life and how you're living. So with that, folks, I'm going to tell you: light something you like. Let this stuff change how you live. Enjoy this week.